Welcome to First Person Defender. Real people put into realistic self-defense training scenarios. These are real scenarios. Hey, give me your money. The role player does not know what's gonna happen. We go through the first scenario, see how they handle it, and then we pick one thing that they could have done to increase their survivability. Train it a little bit, and then run them through a similar scenario. Each weapon is loaded with Simunition FX marking cartridges, the most realistic, non-lethal alternative to live ammunition. Simunition is the closest thing to the real deal. Once you feel the pain penalty once, you don't want to feel it again. For this type of force-on-force -force training, role players are required to wear protective gear. Come on, hit me! It is as real as it gets. Heart rate's elevated, their respiratory rate's elevated, their adrenaline is dumping into their blood. They are scared and amped up. I got a gun! Back up! Get out of my heart! I'm Chase Smith, and uh, I started shooting uh, probably when I was about 16. Uh, about a year and a half ago, I got my concealed carry. I've been carrying since then. The shooting that I've done, it's mostly just been at the range or out in the country. Chase is the perfect candidate. You know, good on him for getting his concealed carry permit. Good on him for carrying and, you know, training, pra or practicing, I'll say. I've never had any formal training. Um, just watch internet videos. Videos don't really teach you what you need to know. You can pick up little things here and there, but you need to go out and get professional instruction. I'm gonna play one of those uh, psychopaths and I'm just gonna attack them yelling and screaming and I'm gonna tackle them to the ground. I can hear the camera guys laughing. They love it because it's his buddy. After everyone geared up, Greg explained some basic force-on-force -force safety rules. The end of the scenario will be called by an index, index, index. Greg also explained what Chase could do if the scenario goes hands-on. Open hand, you can go open hand in the face pretty hard. Go ahead and give me a little shot. Harder. Harder. There we go. So you can basically come and hit me like that. I will react and respond uh, accordingly. Do you have any sort of injuries, anything of that sort? I just had a dental work done. Okay, so. that's it? You just had some dental work done? Yeah. All right, so like, I'll only headbutt you like maybe 75 of my max. 75 that, sounds good. Is that good? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what we've got here, this is your office. You're, you're at work, you're getting ready to uh, to leave for the day. You're gonna come strolling out, la di da di la, and, uh, and we'll go from there, we'll take it from there. His mad computer skills may come out and he may like karate chop me in the throat or something. <laughs> Any questions? Lots. Lots, yeah. I'm not going to give you the answer. So. All right. Any I feel bad almost. You know, these guys over here rope their buddy into something that I don't know if he's ready for. Your vehicle's parked straight over there, so you're okay. just going to head out and walk your vehicle. Okay. With everyone in place, it's time to start the scenario. As I exited the door, uh, there were two guys approaching. Uh, looked to be one guy was kind of hassling another. What's going on, man? What's up, man? Hey, you know, know. The, know, the Pluto thing, Pluto's on the moon sometimes, man. I don't know, man. You know that? Hey, man. Hey, you got a minute, man? No, man, I don't. The guy turned back towards me and started speaking to me. He said, hey, man, let me have a minute. Let me have a minute. Just kind of want to talk. I got to ask you a question. You know, Pluto, Pluto's on the moon sometimes. And yeah. when, when he's not on the moon... I uh, was know. talking some gibberish to him. I mean, sometimes he's got a football, too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, Man, you know what I'm saying, dude? Sometimes yeah. he's on the moon. He let me get into his bubble, and then I, I just went nuts and I attacked him. <laughs> he allowed me to take him to the ground, and I started just going nuts. <laughs> I was fighting as hard as I could. I really had no uh, had no way to get out once he had me pinned. He let me gain control of him, get on top of him, 
and you know start start striking and headbutting them and doing what I need to do. All right, good job. What'd you think? Pretty intense. Pretty intense, right? This is life-changing stuff. It really is. If you've got a psychopath that's now grounded you, yeah. that maybe now you're injured, you're getting fatigued, you've got to do something about it fast. Yeah. Never in a million years will you uh, dream up or understand what a bad guy's willing to do. They're going to be cutting you gouging your eyes out, biting facial parts off, smashing your head in with a brick. You just think that you, all you have to do is just grab the gun and shoot. And that's what carrying a gun is about. My gun was useless because I couldn't get to it. So I had it on me and I could not get my gun out the whole fight. So you need to be able to have some sort of skill to then move to that next level of force. So when we come back, we'll head to the range to give Chase a few pointers to help increase his odds. Is that fun? Yeah, that <laughs> was good. When the bond between hand and gun feels as true as a perfectly placed shot, it's not by accident, it's by design. M&P, advanced by design. Mindset is, is the first tool, and it's the most important tool. And one of the things about reputable training schools, realistic training, is it helps you kind of forge and build that mindset, that will to fight, that will to live, that will to win. Not just survive and live, but to win and never ever be willing to take second place. At the range, Greg and Chase start out with the basics. Obviously now we're not using some munitions guns, so uh, we've got real guns, real bullets, real danger. Uh, simunition guns aren't toys either, but obviously the danger level goes up now. So we need to make sure we abide by the four cardinal safety rules all the time. Every weapon's loaded, we treat it as such. Never let your muzzle cover anything you're not willing to destroy, including our own body parts. So for this exercise, knees, feet, hips, stuff like that. After reviewing the four cardinal safety rules, it's on to the next order of business. If you're carrying a gun as a concealed carry citizen, that is just part of the equation. The first thing we do before we go load up and go down range is we're gonna talk about some very, very basic ground tactics. Much of these attacks occur within a few feet of one another to where you could reach out and shake the person's hand. So you have to have other methods to either create that space or fight off a would-be attacker before you can go to guns. So go ahead and lay down for me. Okay. Shit's about to get weird. I hope you're ready for this. <laughs> the fact of the matter is the majority of fights end up on the ground. I basically had you like this, full mounted, and we were fighting. There's not much you can do. You can push up on me, right. go ahead and push up on me, all right? And all I'm doing is I'm putting all my weight on you, and I can still break and start striking and strike and strike and strike and do whatever I need to do, right? Bad position to be yeah. in. To avoid the full mount, Greg explains how to better control an aggressor using the guard position. Even if you get a knee in my hip, Look at all this space it creates. Yeah. All right. In the guard, Chase instantly has more space and can better control his assailant. You've got more leverage on me. Wrap your legs around my waist. Greg explains the benefits of the closed guard. Now you can use your strong leg muscles to keep me off of you or bring me in tight. Bring me in real tight. Okay. Can I hit you right now? No, Not no, really. No. Not with any force. So you can use this position to kind of push me away or bring me in close. Now you still have to protect yourself. All right, bring your hands up, bring your elbows up. People study for years and years and years on combatives and jujitsu and other martial arts. You can't give everything to them, but I wanted to show him just a couple little quick techniques that he might be able to use. All right, okay, All right, you can let go now. I know you enjoy that, but. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we're gonna go grab our guns, we're gonna load up, we're gonna get our eyes and ears on, and we're gonna do some shooting. Okay, cool. We're gonna work on shooting from a supine position. All right, maybe you get grounded, maybe I threw you to the ground and then was coming in for that, that lethal strike or to attack you, whatever it may be. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start basically on your back as if you've been grounded. 
What I want to try to do, if I can go ahead and keep that person in the guard as I'm fighting, and even possibly roll over just a little bit as I'm shielding myself, I can go ahead and draw my weapon without muzzle sweeping anything. Now, real world, what I'm probably doing is as I draw, I'm probably coming straight into their torso right here, maybe trapping their head and getting that shot out on their torso. After explaining how to address a threat from the guard, Greg demonstrates how to shoot a target from the supine position. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and shift. I'm gonna draw my weapon, drive it straight to the target over my knee, and then I'm gonna basically aim in just like this. My feet and knees are nice and wide. I'm not bringing my knees in to encroach on my muzzle space. As I drive out, we're going for center mass shot. <laughs> I engage my threat. Now, if I need to, from here, I can go ahead and stand up. I want to cover my threat, especially if I just shot this guy off of me. I'm going to go ahead and make sure my muzzle stays pointed at my target, and I'm going to swing my legs around to make sure I don't muzzle sweep myself. From here, I can go ahead and stand up and either cover down on my target or back up, depending on the scenario. All right? First, they review the techniques using dry fire. There you go. Now, it's time to go hot. Stand by, gun. Drop that knee in, foot in. Here you go, up over your knee. All right, good. Go ahead, cover your target. Face up on your right arm. We worked on some shooting techniques from the supine position, from laying on your back. Whether you've been grounded by an assailant or maybe you're backing up creating space and you trip and fall, hit a curb, whatever it may be, and you find yourself on your back. The Ruger LC380 is the perfect pairing of the award-winning LC9 pistol and the popular 380 auto cartridge. It features a dovetailed high-visibility three-dot sight system, seven-round magazine, and finger grip extension floor plate. The Ruger LC380, Another rugged, reliable firearm from Ruger. Nozzler Defense Ammunition is loaded up front with the bonded performance line of bonded core defense bullets. Professionals trust their next move to Nozzler Defense. Pira Black Ops. The baddest tactical 1911 on the planet. First Person Defender, brought to you by Ruger Firearms, Smith & Wesson, Nossler, Crimson Trace, Simunition, and Remington. With everyone in position, it's time for scenario number two. I was walking out to my car outside of the building. Um, I immediately saw a guy to my right. How's it going? Sorry. As I walked past, he began to try to talk to me. Hey, man. And then he started to follow me. Hey, man, wait up. Okay. At that point, I started to kind of square my body up to him. Let me ask you hey, something. Hang on there. I stop. told him to stop. I told him, you can stay where you are. What are you talking about? Don't take another step. What the fuck? Pretty much when I thought I had the situation under control, I was attacked from behind by another guy. Yeah, that's the something. We really legitimately took him by surprise. He didn't know what hit him. But this time, he fought a little bit harder to stay on his feet. I decided that I should probably go ahead and go for my, uh, my weapon um, while I'm still on my feet. He knew last time I took him to the ground, it ended up very badly for me. Get him, man! Get him! Once I did get him to the ground, he stayed kind of on his side and continued to fight me. And uh, then I kind of released so I could go to my gun. And he immediately, he had his gun out already, already had it pointed at me before he even stood using the technique we worked on the range, got to his feet and engaged me. Chase did a much better job in the second scenario. All right, index, index, index. He probably was put in the worst scenario we could figure out. Yeah. What did you think? It was uh, definitely different. Being in a pretty lifelike scenario, 
uh, I think will make me think things over. Much, much better job. Uh, even though I had your back when we went down, you kind of were going for your gun to control it. Um, and you shot, you used that technique. I applaud him for carrying. I applaud him for being interested in it. And I think now he realizes how important it is to go out and get real professional training. I think this has showed me that I need training more than just a class. I don't feel like that is enough. Um, and I, I feel like I need to just do it, just book a class and get proper training. A lot of folks like Chase, they have something like this happen, all of a sudden, whoa, I, I need some help, I need some training. Even though I've had a, just a couple of pointers, but I feel um, more equipped to deal with a situation. Maybe I can roll with a couple more punches.